Well, good morning and welcome to the Heels on Fire conference. My name is Sherelle Jackson and I am the first lady of, of Excuse me. My husband is Pastor Leon T. Jackson of the Abundant Harvest Church of God in Christ here in Buffalo, New York. And um, I serve with him and I just love the people of God. I love um, what ministry means. And I'm just excited about um, being on this platform with all of you and sharing with you on this this morning and uh, to kick off this conference. What a beautiful um, theme that we have for this conference. And I also want to give honor to our visionaries, um, our co-visionaries for this conference, Dr. Uh, Robin Jaffe and also uh, Prophetess Lynn C. Parker. We just thank God for these great women of God. And I haven't had a privilege uh, as of yet to uh, meet Dr. Jaffe, but maybe in the near future. But we just thank God for the opportunity to come and to share uh, in this level of ministry with you all. Um, so my topic, and we're going to get right into prayer first before we do anything. And I just thank God because this particular song has just ministered to me all through the coming in of this year. And just really learning how to trust God. Um, we, my topic is stiletto hill how high can you go we have to trust god and so before we go into anything we want to just acknowledge him for who he is hallelujah lord we thank you we praise you and we magnify you god we ask tonight or this morning that you will look on us that God, you would have your way in each and every heart and every mind. God, we submit our will to yours. And God, we ask tonight that you will look, or this morning, again, that you will look on us and that you would have your way as this time of ministry has been ordained for the people of God, for those that are coming in that don't know you, that will be that will have the opportunity to know you and to have a relationship with you. We thank you, oh God, for every participant. And God, we extend this prayer to every person that is uh, on every platform and the ones that are leading and going forth in each and every topic that you will have your way in each and every session. God, even through the prayer, the praise, the worship, the word, God, we thank you. And God, we give you praise. Look on the visionaries, oh God, and we ask that you will bless them in very special ways as they go forward in this time and in this weekend, that this will be the start of something great and awesome in the lives of your people. And we thank you now. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Thank God and amen. So, I praise God again for who he is, and I praise God for <clears throat> having this particular um, topic, stilettos. Um, I do own a pair of stilettos. I could not find them. I was going to bring them to the screen. But I just want to show you, I do have one, and I looked up. See that? I looked up what stilettos, um, where they derive from, who created them, those kinds of things. Because I was just interested in seeing, you know, what was the purpose of a stiletto, a stiletto heel. And it talked about stiletto being a very pointed heel. Um, so a stiletto can be anywhere from a two inch heel uh, to a four inch heel or beyond. And I know, right, ladies, could you imagine going beyond four inches? But anywho, uh, some of us can, and so uh, and some of us do, but it can be anywhere, again, from a two-inch to a four-inch heel. And what I thought about the significance of the of what, what I read as far as history about what the stiletto heel represented, it said that the creator, it gives different credence to different um, designers. So one designer... Charles Jordan. He was a French designer. Um, and they give him some credit. Uh, Roger Denver, uh, they give him some credit. Um, Andre Perugia, they give him some credit. All these were French designers 
Um, and it, a lot of the Stiletto Hill was derived in the European setting, and then it advanced into the United States. Um, these last two, uh, Roger and Andre, these designers, it said, and according to dailyheels.com, that these two um, designers, they popularized the design of these these hills, these stiletto hills in the 1950s. And because of that, it quickly spread across into the United States or Europe first and then into the United States. But if you go back, uh, it talks about where did the high hill derive from? What, what precipitated a design and what was the need and purpose? Um, in Persia in the 15th century, it was, it was said that soldiers used them um, to help secure their feet in stirrups um, because they were in war. And also it may mention that some of the heels were created so that they would be able to walk in certain areas, whether it was mud or uh, certain things that they would have to go through um, because of times of war and whatnot, um, so that they wouldn't get stuck. Isn't that something? Um, so it was, it was, these were created with purpose. Um, so also it talked about how the male aristocrats wore them to appear taller and also to not just make a fashion statement, but it was also to, uh, it was a kind of like a power or authority, the presence you're trying to present a presence, um, with your height. Um, so think about those things, even as we go through, um, you know, talking about Stiletto Hills, because Stiletto Hills, yes, they give you height. But what I thought about in in anything that we do for God and in God, and I know we can look at this from so many different ways, but when I look at it from a spiritual aspect, when we say, how high can you go? Um, so many times we as women have found ourselves in such competitive states or found ourselves in arenas where there is co competition that sometimes is placed upon us and we don't necessarily know what to do. Um, so we have to know that I don't have to, if I can't walk in a four inch, that I'm okay walking in my two inch. Because you have to be who God has created you to be. Let's go to Genesis uh, 1 and uh, verse 27 says, so God created man in his own image. Because when you when I showed you those different shoes, one was red, one was purple, one is patent leather, one is velvet. They're different, but they're, they all have, they both have purpose. Now look at these. They both have purpose. Whoever created these and whoever put their stamp, you know, they got the little gold, you know, button back there. I think these are Michael Kors and these are oh, Worthington's and that's J.C. Penney's brand. Um, these are, you know, Michael Kors, a famous designer. So no matter who designed them, no matter what the designer, they all, they both have purpose. And so when that designer or whomever created them, they created them so that someone would be able to see them and, and like them, purchase them and, and wear them. So I thought about a lot of things. Um, so we can look at the first thing that it brings to light is image. Uh, in the scripture we just read in uh, Genesis 1 and 27 says that God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. So the first thing we need to know is that even though we have a lot of uh, designers that we have to give credit and credence to um, in regards to the high heel and the stiletto being the creator, uh, then taking on and branching into and building upon those things and enhancing the design, um, God himself is sovereign. So God only creates. That is so important because God cannot be created 
He can't be changed. Um, he can't be altered. He, you can't take him and add anything to him to make him greater. He's already who he is all by himself. Um, so we look at that. We know that we are created in his image and the likeness of him. We're created um, to do all these great things in him. We have purpose just as those stiletto shoes are different, but we all have purpose. And John 1 and 1, it says, let me go first before I go there. I want to go to Psalm 139 and 13 it says, you, it says, for you were created, my inmost being, you knit me together in my mother's womb. And I will praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful and I know them full well. Hallelujah. So women, we are created not only with purpose, but we have design. God has made us with such great intensity and careful consideration. In one of my devotionals here in the Bible, it says we were made lovingly, carefully, uh, reverently, and exactly right. He makes no mistake. When you were created, he knew exactly and full well who you were going to be. So let's, let's look at a couple of facets of stiletto heels and the height of where we want to go in God um, and where it is that God is trying to take us. Well, first thing we have to deal with is our image. We have to always maintain the image of our creator. We have to maintain and always carry a, ourselves in a way of character that says, I belong to God, that I am fearfully and I am wonderfully made. So we don't want to go out and do our own thing. We don't want to go out and try to revamp and redo because then we'll be in trouble. Um, confidence is the second thing that I wanted to uh, talk about. We have to have confidence. Um, when, when I look at Stiletto Hills, I, I had opportunity um, over the course of a couple of weeks just to look at some of the stiletto heels that are there that are created and that some of the designers have created. And some of them are very intimidating when you look at them. Some of them I found they have glass heels and they have really, you know, pointy heels. And I was thinking like, wow, to walk in those, it will really take confidence. It would take me to um, not just put them on, but I would need to figure out how I'm going to walk in these heels. Um, so stilettos can be intimidating. Um, just as when we are walking with God, sometimes the things that God calls for us to do, it can be a little intimidating. We can feel as though, God, I can't do that. That's too much. But God is encouraging us. Yes, you can, because you're created in the likeness and the image of him. And so that lets us know we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. He gives us what we need. Just want to read a few scriptures about having confidence in God. Philippians 4 and 13 says, again, I can do all things through him who strengthens me. And that is uh, the, the NIV version. Um, also, 2 Timothy uh, 1 and 7, so it says, excuse me, for God gave us a spirit, it's not a fear, but of power and love and of self-control. So we thank God that even though sometimes it can be intimidating, the things we have to encounter in life, uh, if we learn how not to just solely have confidence in our own ability, because God in one scripture, it does say here that we don't put away uh, self-confidence totally, but we have to make sure that it is engaged in the confidence of God. So I don't want to go outside of God saying, I'm doing it on my own, but I want to stay in the realm of saying, no, I can do it because I'm doing it through him because he gives me the strength. So you can do it. And even though these uh, stilettos are a little bit intimidating. Um, whatever you may be encountering in your life right now may be intimidating. If you have confidence and maintain your confidence in God, you are going to be able to do the things that he has ordained and purpose for you to do. Because remember, God is sovereign. He creates. He cannot be created. 
Um, Joshua one and nine says, I have, have not, I commanded you be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened and do not be dismayed for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And so when we think about that and we can think about 2020, it has been very devastating for a lot of us. Um, some of us have lost or, you know, we have suffered great loss, um, whether it has been loved ones, friends, um, just as a community. Um, I know us as a community of believers have um a lot of leaders have gone on um, to be with the Lord and he has set forth, you know, judgment and he's done that. And we say yes, and we yield to his ways and we acknowledge his sovereignty. Um, doesn't it, it makes it hard sometimes because we're yet human. So yes, we cry and yes, we go through. But what I found out is that in Proverbs three and six says, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. If we learn to really acknowledge the Lord in all our ways and acknowledge him even, even during this time of grief, because grief can overwhelm you and, and grief can be so much sometime and it can be so overbearing. But God wants us to know that does not mean that um, you're not who he says that you are just because right now you're just going through a time and a phase. Um, so self-confidence and also having confidence in God. It takes those things to walk in those stilettos. The stilettos, if you can look at it as your your spirituality and, and where God and how he has formed you, look at it as this is the image, um, not only image, but then God has given me the ability to have the self-confidence and also confidence in him. So you have to learn how to walk in those hills. And there's so many times I wrote down here, so many times we want to run before we walk. Uh, who wants to run in stilettos? Not me. Uh, but some of us, you know, what he's saying is slow down. We have to learn how to walk. We have to learn how to talk. We have to learn how to become who he desires us to become. The third thing is the height. Height, when I begin to think about that. I begin to think about the inches. I begin to think about the make. I begin to think about the purpose. I begin to think about clothing and all those things that it affects us as women when we put on those heels. Now, I begin to also think about humility because uh, the scripture says that Jesus was obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. And I started thinking about how sometimes we want so much to be in a place where um, we want to be looked upon and honored. But he said, those that are the greatest among you are the greatest servants. You have to be a servant. You have to have a servant's heart. You have to be. And, and what I found out, a lot of times a person um, that truly is humble and that really desires to serve God, it, it comes with without a lot of pats on the back. It comes without a lot of um, you know, the job it comes without a lot of, you know, you don't always get credit. You don't always, you know, but what I'm finding out is that the Lord is fashioning us not to look for credit. He's fashioning us not to want the pat on the back, but just to serve because that is what we want to do. And that's who we are. So we thank God for the humility and the servitude that he's teaching us. Um, how to be those servants. Um, you want to go high in God? We have to learn how to humble ourselves before him. Proverbs four, uh, 22 and 4 says, the reward for humility and fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life. Um, when we think about that, we look for rewards in life. We look for prestige. Um, sometimes, you know, you put your heels on, you're looking for those compliments. But more than that, the reward of humility uh, and the fear of the Lord is riches and honor and life. Uh, Colossians 3 and 12 says, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. And sometimes in our lives, we find in our walk that God is redesigning us and refashioning us and making some amendments to our life. Um, I'm going through something right now that I'm figuring out 
Like, where am I supposed to be in? Uh, who am I supposed to be in this particular situation? And so sometimes God takes you through certain circumstances to show you that because I'm the creator, I have the ability, I have the power, I have the authority to make changes to my creation. So when I looked at that, I began to think about how Jeremiah, the prophet, and the Lord had given him, he said, go down to the potter's house. He said, there, I will show you. I'm going to show you. And sometimes we're looking for the message to be right here, but sometimes we have to move out and go into places. And the, even this particular forum that God has afforded for us to be in on this weekend, um, this is one of those times God is allowing us to come down into a so kind of potter's house to come onto the wheel for us to be changed and for our lives to be better. Um, if you maybe have gone through something and you feel a little low and you felt like I can't reach uh, where I need to be in God, he's going to encourage you. I just believe in this weekend that you will be able to do the things that he has called you to do because again, he has all authority. Um, I began to think about um, I began to talk to God about, you know, me. And I said, Lord, I said, you know, I feel like I'm just going to be a diluted version of myself if I do it this way or, you know, if I, I if I don't say anything. And if you know how you do, you talk, talk to God about, you know, yourself and your circumstance. But then the Lord says, I did. I became um, sin. I became, he said, in the form, I came in the form of sinful flesh. I, I was here to fulfill a purpose from the creator, from my father, so that you could live and have opportunity and chance. And so I begin to think about that. Sometimes we want things to be the same way they have always been. And currently we are reading um, a book uh, in our women's department and it's called A Hundred Days of believing bigger. It's a devotional journal. And the author is Marshawn Evans Daniels. And that book has been life changing. And then I begin to think about that even today. How could you read a book that is already prompting a hundred days of believing bigger and that you didn't think there would be no requirement of change? There is always going to be some type of requirement as you elevate and as you go forth in your relationship with God. Not because he's saying that it's, you're so much flawed, but he's preparing you for something that is greater. You're talking about how high can you go? God has called some of us to greater, greater levels of ministry. He's calling, calling us out to do things that we never thought that we would be able to do. But God is teaching us that you can do all things through me. We may, some of us may go into nations, to third world countries, places that we just never thought we would ever be. But because he's the creator, he's able to do all those things and place that desire in us. And he's able and he's, he's preparing us even now. So as I began to talk to him about those things and he began to share with me that um, sometimes you have to just become who it is, what I need you to be to fulfill the purpose in me. So that was good for me. And I hope that blesses you. You have to become who he says you need to be to fulfill the purpose in him. And so as I began to... Um, uh, go forth and, and just a few more scriptures on humility. Uh, James 4 and 10 says, humble yourselves before the Lord and he will exalt you. And then Proverbs 15, 33 says, the fear of the Lord is instruction in wisdom and humility become, and excuse me, and humility comes before honor. You can't look to be exalted and to be honored if you don't have and don't possess humility, because in God, that is what God is looking for. He says he resists the proud. He gives grace to the humble. So when you have a heart of humility, excuse me, when you have a heart of humility, that means that you're able to do it. You're pliable in his hand. It's just like that clay that is in the potter. And it's just like 
when it's other things that are happening in our lives that we have to get back on that wheel so that God can continue to fashion us and make us and mold us. So he does all those great things and he's the only one that can do it. So we have to acknowledge men, we need God to go back. And we say, Lord, I need to go back. So I need you to do these things in me so I can fulfill the purpose that you have called me to. Um, in our last scripture uh, for humility, humility, excuse me, is Second Chronicles 7, 14 says, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves. And I know we've heard that scripture throughout this time, especially during this pandemic. Um, we have quoted this scripture. We have said this scripture, but are we the scripture? The Bible says we should not just be hearers of his word only, but also become doers of his word. So if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. God will do it. He's the only one that can do it. So we have to turn to him. We have to look to him. We have to depend on him. Um, and then I thought about how the next or the fourth point is dependability. Dependability on the creator. So think about this. I thought about how you can go into certain designers and you look on their websites and they have guarantees. So if your heel broke or if there is a tear or something that they say should never happen, there is a, um, a way that you may be able to get a replacement or they'll repair it or whatever. They will give you instructions how to get that done. Um, sometimes we depend solely um, so much on what we know from people. And I thought about this in the spiritual sense, how we depend so much on what people have said, what people say, what people have done in our lives, what people uh, may have declared that we, are, we won't be able to do. Have you ever wanted to do something and it is so big, it's bigger than what you could even phantom? And you know that it's God when it's that, because when it's just burning for you to do it and it's just that desire and you say, well, I don't have the money. I don't have the, the education and I don't have, you begin to list all those things. And it's just like Moses. Moses said to God, you know, I can't speak. But God said, now, you know what? You keep saying it. So I'm going to give you a mouthpiece. He gave him um, his brother, Aaron. He gave him Aaron as a prophet to go with him, to be his mouthpiece. But God is saying to the same thing for us right now. If he's giving you a desire, whether it is ministry, whether it's something that is just in your life, whatever it is, God will help you. God will give you what you need so that you can do the things that he asked for you to do. And sometimes it's not just about uh, going out here and just doing all these what we call great exploits. Sometimes it is ministry that is taking place right in your home. It is things that seem so big. It's situations that seem like they never will change. But one thing is guaranteed and for sure, number one, that God hears us. God sees us and God knows. God knows just what to do. He'll know he knows he doesn't have to think about a plan. He already has the plan. So we just have to trust him. We got to trust that God is going to do what he only can do. So just as Moses, he said, I was with Moses, with my servant Moses, I'm going to be with you. It's what he encouraged Joshua. So we thank God. He's with us. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Um, so dependability. We have to go back at times and remember who our creator, who he is, the things he has placed in us, the things that he has promised um, from us. And we have to remember that it is him. The scripture says that we move, we live, and we have our being. Sometimes we can walk up in, in this particular walk and we sometimes stumble and sometimes we fall. But guess what? We can get back up. You can get back up and you can keep moving in God. And then there's a time in our lives where number five, I want to get to my walk in God. Sometimes I found out when you're walking in stilettos and some of these, uh, some women can attest to this, whether it's high heels, stilettos, we're walking and sometimes your heel can become a little wobbly and you feel like it's a little dip there that should not be there. And sometimes we have been in situations where our heel 
it just breaks. And it is difficult to try to walk with one full heel and one broken. Um, so the Lord had given me today that sometimes in our lives, we have become so connected to being the person in ministry that we neglect to be ministered to. And that it's okay because there are areas in our lives that we need God to minister to us. We need God to heal us. You should just declare even in this moment, Lord, fix me. Lord, heal me. And Lord, restore me. And it's okay. It's not a weakness to acknowledge that you need your creator. Um, do not make, it's a falsity to make, to for us to even think that we can make it without God. At, at some point you are in a place you never need God. We always need God. We're always leaning and depending on him. So when you look at that, you're walking him. Lord, I need you to fix me. I need you to restore me and I need you to heal me. So when we look at that, you don't have to walk around broken. You don't have to walk around with areas of your life that become dis detached from God. You don't have to walk around and pretend, not for us and not for anybody else, that you're in, you're in a place or you're walking high or you're walking tall and you're trying to do something that you're really not doing. Um, God wants honesty. That's where that humility has to be a part of who you are in God at all times. You cannot be come who you need to be in God without being humble. Um, so a lot of times, let's remember, uh, those of us that are women, we may be housewives, we may be single women, uh, we may be women that are widowed, we may be women that are divorced, we may be women in ministry. Everyone has certain uh, mandates and responsibilities that we're called to. We have certain mandates and responsibilities we have to people, but that does not mean that we are exempt uh, coming to the creator and asking him to heal us and acknowledging our hurt, our wounds. If we're talking about walking high, you have to learn how to be real with yourself. Um, there's some things that you can't do. I'm not walking in four inches right now. I'm walking in two. And you walk in two until you can get to where you need to be. If four is where you're going, then you have to master two first. So I thank God um, that we have opportunity to share. I just wanted to share a little bit out of um, the book. This is our book that we read. I encourage you to get this book. It has been such a blessing um, to our women's group. Um, we are dealing with, we have went from, uh, trust uh, to identity and uh, purpose. So now we are in disruption. And so this is where the Lord is really showcasing that you can go through things and you think that sometimes you ever had a situation and you're thinking it really is, you, you thought this is good. You ever had a relationship? You thought like, oh, this is just foolproof. You could have a, a, a friendship and, and you just been besties since you were five years old, six years old. But sometimes in those relationships, a disruption comes because sometimes we start to depend on the relationship to be what we think it is rather than what God is saying that it should be or can be. Um, so I'm just going to read a little bit of this. It's talking about identity shifts. And I thought about when you're walking, you know, when you get on your heels and you got on your suit, your dress or whatever it is, you got your makeup on, you got your hair done, you know, you're feeling good about yourself, then you have a disruption. Sometimes there are things that happen uh, in our lives to make us stop and to acknowledge God for ourselves again. We have to go back again. Sometimes we have to go and redo some things in our lives. The identity shift says, do not be afraid for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. And that's the New Living Translation of Isaiah 43 and 1. The first sentence says, we can miss who we are called to be because we are addicted or attached to who we've decided to be. Now, I just could have just threw the book at that point because sometimes you're like, what, what? But yes, God is saying you can become addicted to wanting to be who you are. You, you're saying to me, am I going to become this 
a person that I don't know? Am I going to become this diluted uh, version of myself? Sometimes you have to get on that potter's wheel for yourself and you have to say, God, fix me. God, fix me. God, heal me and restore me. Do it for me. And so that has to be your prayer because yes, we can become addicted to who, who we are who we decided to be. And that speaks volumes because sometimes we're saying, I don't want to change. I don't want to do anything different. You know, and even though you may put on stilettos, you may not even look good with uh, the four inch, but it's just because that's who you decided you want to be. And nobody can tell you anything different. Somebody else may come along and say, you know, a two inch may be a little bit better and a little bit more conformable for you to wear right now. And then as you go on, you may be able to put on those stilettos if you want to. But we have to have an ear to hear. We have to have an ear to hear. And then it also says here that there are five mountains um, in our life, the five success mountains. Um, number one is marriage mountain, motherhood mountain, the money mountain. Um, Number four is the mending mountain. And then five is the making a difference mountain. Sometimes we have so many um, things that we are trying to do and we're trying to be our best at. We want to be the best mother. Uh, we want to be the one. And it talked about in here how your marriage, you want the marriage that people look on and they use as an example to see the love of Christ. And that's really what it should be about that the marriage symbolizes or symbolizes what Christ in the church, that that's what marriage is about, that we learn to be forgiving, that we learn to love one another in spite of. And when we lose sight of those things, and that's what makes that first sentence, how we start to become addicted to or attached to who we decided to be, even in our marriages, we have to be careful that we say, well, that's just me. No you may need to change because being you at that moment and that time may not be what God is going to, it's not useful for your purpose in God. So we just say, Lord, fix me. That's simple as that. Some things you just can't do on your own. Some things you don't know, but as you go to God, he will give you um, insight even into you. Um, talks about the, the motherhood mountain. Um, some of us that are mothers and some of us, maybe we don't have children, but hey, we are helping to mother other children. We're being that mother figure. Even in those arenas, um, we have to allow for mistakes. Sometimes we're just trying to be so the perfect mother and we're trying to be this and that. But God is saying, I don't expect you to get everything right all the time. I don't expect for you to be the perfect mother without any mistakes, without any flaws, without anything to be said. No. Sometimes we're going to make mistakes. We're going to make mistakes as mothers and we're going to make mistakes that, you know, we have to go back and we have to apologize and get those things corrected. But that does not mean you're not a good mother. It just means you're a human. Keep on walking, women. Keep on going. And the money mountain, we want to be successful. And it's funny because it talked about those the little heels. We want to wear it with the right suit. We want to be in the office, you know, the, the, the board meetings. Uh, we want the awards. We want to we want to win. We want to feel as though we're successful. Nothing wrong with success. But when success supersedes your spirituality and whether or not it, it starts to depict who you are, and, and not in God and starts to, you know, lean more to the things of the world. And that's where you need to be careful that you don't want to walk into something and walk past what God is trying to do or walk on and walk through. But we want to walk with God. We want to walk in God. Amen. I don't want to do anything that God has not afforded and not has ordained for me to do. I want to live the life that he has given uh, for me. Um, and the last mountain that I wanted to talk about was making a difference. Nothing wrong wanting to make a difference, but don't get so caught up on wanting to make a difference that, you know, every every single thing that says that through, uh, it says through our efforts seem noble, truly we want something in exchange and we want to be validated. That's where you got to start to see when you're starting to do things and you're starting to want validation, that's not the right attitude to have. Um, so we have to check ourselves. That's why it's so important um, for us to have um, 
that you know insight in that relationship with God. We got to have a relationship with Him. And the last sentence says here, however, fixed beliefs about ourselves block us from God's master purpose. And for this reason, when God gets ready to ship you, you can guarantee He will disrupt you. So we thank God because even through all of that, and even through um, what we're talking about, the stilettos being on or on a fire for God, um, having our focus in God, um, keeping and maintaining our humility and our dependency in God. And these all these things work together to give us the direction of what we need for God to continue to have his way in our lives, the greatest way, the only way that I know that if you are achieving and going higher in God, you have to remain humble. You have to remain consistent. You got to remain committed and dedicated. You got to remain in his presence. You have to have a prayer life. It is no if, ands, or buts about it. You have to have a prayer life, not just when you feel like it. It has to be a time set aside and dedicated, uh, not only for just prayer, but for word. You have to have a word life. You got to be in his word, reading his word, and his word should be in you. And your the Bible says, and David said, the, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. So we start to do all these things. There is no height. There is no depth in him that you cannot accelerate and reach to because God has great and awesome things for all of us to do. Uh, it's amazing that you can say to someone, God has great things for you. You can say that to every person that you come encounter with. And it's true. God has great things in store for all of us. So we thank God for this time of sharing, this time to come uh, in this form of ministry. I pray that something was said today to encourage your heart to keep moving in God. Don't stop. Don't come down. Keep moving. The only time you should stop is when you're saying, Lord, fix me. Lord, heal me. Lord, restore me. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you today for your goodness. Lord, we thank you for your kindness and your love. We thank you for all that you're doing in us, for us, and through us. I pray today, God, that you touch the hearts of each and every woman, letting them know that they are fearfully and that they are wonderfully made. They are beautiful in you because you are our creator and you do not make mistakes. And Lord, we just say thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. So we bless the Lord for you. We bless the Lord for each and every one. And thank you again for this opportunity. God bless.